In this video, we're going to find the volume under uh, this curve, x times y cubed over x squared plus 1, over the rectangle um, x in the range 0 to 1, y in the range 0 to 2. These are both closed sets. And the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to uh, visualize this using this great program called DPGraph. Unfortunately, DPGraph is only available for Windows computers. Uh, if you don't have it, there are a variety of other ways. I just find this to be the best and the most colorful way of doing it. Anyway, here we go. First thing we're going to do is going to plot the function and then um, see what the area that we're looking for actually looks like. So I go to the edit bar, that will the edit button that will bring up this menu. Um, the very last line is where we're going to type in our code. It's relatively straightforward. We're going to type in z equals, then we'll type in the numerator, x times y cubed over, and then parentheses, x squared plus 1, and that's that. Then we'll click execute, and that's our surface, right? But at this point, we don't really have any reference. We don't know what's x, y, and z, and we don't know what the scale on this thing is, so that's pretty easy to fix. We're going to go back to the edit menu, scroll up until we see uh, 3D box, make that true, click execute, and now we can see what our x, y, and z range is. Um, x goes from negative 3 to 3, y goes from negative 3 to 3, z goes from negative 3 to 3. But remember, we're only concerned about x in 0 to 1, y is in 0 to 2, right? So here's what we're going to do. To get a better idea of you know, the integral that we're visualizing, notice how I wrapped everything in parentheses. I've got graph 3D, then double parentheses, and it ends with a double parentheses. Okay. Inside those, we're now going to type comma x equals 0, comma y equals 0, comma, oh, I'm sorry, x equals 0, comma, x equals 1, comma, y equals 0, comma, y equals 1. And that's y equals 2. And that's just our bounding box, right? So we'll click Execute. And now we've got these uh, horizontal and vertical uh, planes. And the area in question is inside this region right here, underneath the curve and above the z-axis. So that's, that's really what we're looking for. It's going to be underneath the curve inside that inner rectangle. Um, and again, we can visualize that pretty nicely. Here's how. Go to the Edit menu. Remember, we want z less than that. We want x less than 0, and x, I'm sorry, we want x greater than 0, x less than 1, y greater than 0, y less than 2, and we'll click Execute. And basically, the purple is true, the red is false, um, and this isn't very helpful. What I had forgotten to do, and what's important to do here, is instead of commas, type ampersand ampersand symbol. And that will give us uh, the intersection of these areas. That's a little bit better. This is now the intersection of all those areas. But remember, z goes from negative 3 to 3, so we actually want z you know, greater than 0, so we'll go and tack that on at the end. Now watch carefully if I do comma, z greater than 0, what we'll get is this, a purple plane. Um, purple because it's greater than 0 up here, and red because it's less than 0 down there. Um, to cut it off, all we do is change that comma to an ampersand and execute. Now this is, this is the area in question, right? This is the, I'm sorry, the volume in question. Doesn't look too good because of the resolution and also because of our bounding box. So now we'll go and notice the minimum x should be 0. The maximum x will give it a little bit of space, make it 2. The minimum y is 0. The maximum y should be 2, but we'll give it a little bit of space and call it 3. Uh, the minimum z is 0, and the maximum z, leave it 3, and click Execute. Now, this gives us a much better idea of what we're working with. Of course, if you notice, we've cut off the very top part of it, so we'll go back to Edit make the maximum z equal to 4, see what that does. There we go. That's a little bit better. That's a better representation of our uh, shape that we're looking for the volume of. And we can refine um, the rectangles. We'll scroll up a bit. And 3D resolution, instead of 21, let's make it 50. Click Execute. And there we have it. 
a nice picture of the volume in question. So at this point, um, what I'd like you to do is to pause the video, actually compute the integral, and when you're done, uh, resume the video to see if you got the correct answer. So I'll let you pause it now. And we're back. So let's see what the actual value of this integral is. Let's scroll down. There are two ways of doing this. I can integrate with respect to x first. And take this as an integra iterated integral. Or I can integrate it with respect to y first. And then integrate with respect to x. Either way should give you the same answer. Let's take integration with respect to x first. Right? So this is from x equals 0 to x equals 1. Right? Oops, sorry, that should not be x, that should be u. u equals 1, u equal 2. Why am I writing u instead of x? Because if I'm integrating with respect to x, I'm treating y as a constant. I'm only looking at x over x squared plus 1. So I do a u substitution. u is x squared plus 1, du is 2x dx. And then I want to take these bounds, x equals 1, x equals 0, and put them into the u function and get our new bounds in terms of u, which is 2 and 1. That's why these guys were switched up. Now remember, y is treated as a constant here because we're integrating with respect to u. So this is really just 1 over u du. Pretty easy to compute. That is just um, natural log u times y cubed uh, from u equals 2 to u equals 1. And then we just go through and again treating y as a constant. Uh, we fill in the blanks, ln of 2, ln of 1. Now, natural log of 1 is 0, so this whole term goes to 0. And we have 1 half natural log of 2, which is just a constant, so we've moved it out here. And the remaining integral is with respect to y, from y equals 0 to y equals 2, of y cubed dy. Fortunately, that integral is very easy to compute. Um, it's just going to be 1 fourth y to the fourth from y equals 2 to y equals 0. Um, and when you go through and do that, you end up with just 4. So the final answer is 2 times natural log of 2 units cubed. Units cubed because it's a volume. Now let's go and start with the other variable first. So now we're going to integrate with respect to y first and then with respect to x. So remember, now we're looking only at this. And this is from y equals 2 to y equals 0. And you'll notice that, again, we have y to the fourth, 1 fourth y to the fourth, from y equals 0 to y equals 2. We input y equals 2, y equals 0. Of course, this entire thing gets wiped out because of the 0 in the numerator and no 0 in the denominator, of course. And we're left with the integral um, 4, which is the result of the, the y integral, 1 to 0. These are x bounds, x equals, of x over x squared plus 1 dx. And we just did that. u is x squared plus 1 du 2x dx. u of 1 and u of 0 gives us 2 and 1 as our new bounds. Very important when you're doing these u substitutions. And then we just go through and carry on as we would in, in, you know, calculus one. And we end up with the exact same thing as before. Two times natural log of two units cubed. Which way is easier? I don't know. You decide. Uh, it's up to you. There is a third way of going about this, however. Notice that our function z, right, z is the height, is given by the product of two functions, a function entirely in terms of x and a function entirely in terms of y. The denominator of this overall function is never 0 over its domain. In fact, that this, by the way, is pronounced for all. So this is saying the denominator is never 0 for all x in, that's what this symbol means, uh, 0 to 1. And in fact, it, it's for all x in real numbers. You could go as far as saying for all x in real numbers, but we're only concerned with this particular domain because that was 
the way the problem was set up. Anyway, the function is continuous over its domain. Over, over its x and its y domain. y obviously is continuous over 0 to 2, over its entire domain, y cubed is continuous. So when you have this, when you have this, you have a function entirely of x, a function entirely of y, over some rectangle, right, x in a to b, y in c to d, x is continuous over this domain, y is continuous over this domain. You can write the integral as the product of the function of x dx from a to b, times the function of y dy from y is c to d. Everything's continuous. Everything just basically turns into calc 1. In our case, right, it's x over x squared plus 1 dx, x equals 0 to x equals 1. And this is y is 0 to y is 2 of y cubed dy function entirely of x, function entirely of y. We go through and we carry out the exact same computations. There's our u substitution again. Uh, remember your bounds. I can never emphasize this enough. This is very important. Um, that's where these guys come from, the u integral. And we go through and we carry through, and guess what? We get the exact same answer. Personally, I prefer doing it this way. It's a bit easier to keep track of things doing it this way. It's your choice to do whatever works best for you. Um, when you're doing polar integrals, this technique of splitting it up, um, f of x, f of y, really you'd have f of r, f of theta, uh, makes things a little bit easier to do. I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, please ask, and uh, have a great day.